Hey, this is Cameron, and welcome to the practice log. All right, well, I'm in a different uh, location. Let me show you around a little bit. I'm in some sort of what's meant to be a kid's room, I believe. Well, I have some makeshift scenes to kind of emulate the old setup. You should feel right at home. All right, let's go ahead and make our way to the chair, and I'll see you there. Yeah, it's a little bit cramped. You know, we kind of have all the stuff. I found this clock. This will indicate the passage of time, so you won't think that I'm just in a timeless void. I think that that's kind of an important thing in this channel. So it's been a couple days since I actually played the guitar, which I have an idea for what we're going to do besides the practice in this one. Uh, obviously, I can't react to stuff as usual, but I have a few things that I want to tell you regardless. But before I do any of that, I think I just want to go ahead and jump into playing since it's been a little while since I've done that. Let's go ahead and jump into that first. Man, do I want to get to it already? I feel like I'm going a little fast. This is a new environment, so I'm kind of pushing through. This is like a proof of concept sort of video. Yeah, this is weird. This is the first one I've done outside of my apartment. Kind of interesting. We'll chit chat more after this. Let's go ahead and grab that guitar. My fingers are itching to play, you know? So let's go ahead and do it. I'm kind of already at the chair. I I'm gonna change the angle a bit and that's gonna maybe do something. <laughs> The change was less dramatic than I hoped, but whatever, we're here. I'm gonna play guitar now. We're combining the morning and night session right now, so I am just gonna practice everything. I think that'll be enough for while I'm away from my usual habitat. I'll play something for you at the end, of course. How could I deny you that? All right, well, I'm gonna jump into it. We'll chat after. I will see you on the other side. So let's take it back to the old school way of doing things. I think I'm gonna take a little bit of a break and do something else for a while. So let me bring you closer. I'm going to take the battery out of this clock because it is just a metronome ticking at 60 BPM. So with that being said, I practiced the Bach and that's all I've worked on in the past hour. I'm probably gonna put in another hour after uh, we talk for a bit. The battery's not out. That'll shut it up. I'm probably only gonna do two of these because that's really what I have time for while I'm on vacation here. We got two beach videos. Uh, maybe I'll show you some stuff too. I might uh, show you some pictures or a video of me outside at some point, perhaps at the beach. Would you enjoy seeing that? It's pretty boomy in here. So I'm gonna play something for you after the next practice part. I wanna take this time to talk about my favorite technical exercises. Yeah, this is gonna be a fun one. This is also just kind of a reminder to all my students who might be watching. All right, here's the first one that I wanna talk about. Giuliani arpeggios. Learn all of them and then come back. I'm just kidding. To do this, you really only need the second one, which we have the first one, but I'm pretty sure it's just like the chords like that. The second one is this. So you can look at the sheet music for it. I have it in the description in the shared Google Drive. And even if you can't do the chords, you can probably at the very least do this. Just play the PIM arpeggio. Now, something that I think that you can do with that, that I think is kind of overshadowed, is uh, accenting certain fingers. So for example, if I were to accent P, accent I, So I'm not really pressing down with more force or anything like that. I'm just moving it a bit faster. Because that's really how you get more volume. You just move quicker. So that's like quiet. And then loud. I'm just exploding my hand muscles. If you ever find that you're struggling with like finger accuracy, I think that this is a really good one for that. Like you ever wonder how somebody brings out like the high note of a chord? Like when I'm playing chords, I'm always trying to bring out that high note. The way that you can start working on that is doing them separately. And I'm using M and A there. So 
So you know, a really good thing to work on. Another arpeggio, and this is one that I haven't found yet in the Giuliani arpeggios, but I'm playing this one in 4-4, P-M-A-M. -M. And this is a really good arpeggio for building up your A finger, especially for stuff like Villalobos Etude 1. I find that the A finger is always the weakest one in that, where it kind of slows you down. I found that something that really helped me with that, an arpeggio that really helped, is this one. P, M, A, and then back to M. And then go through your thumb. So you have to go M, A, M, M, A, M. I feel like I always see people trying to work on M, A, like scales. The thing is, like, you have your IM scales. This is like your Castlevania whip right here. This is the best thing. I feel like using M, A, unless you're in a really specific circumstance, I don't even know what it would be, where you have to use an M-A scale, so like, why even bother practicing it? What you will see, though, is an M-A alternation, like that. Like, you see that in Villalobos, Etude 1, where you have to hit A twice, actually, which that's when it gets hard when you need to alternate it. Multiple times. Can I have more nail sound in that, please? So, one that I found really useful is first, using the Giuliani arpeggio style, because I'm not sure if this is a Giuliani arpeggio. I did make it up. It might be one, though, if you look deeper into it. P, M, A, M, and then go through your P motion, as usual. Of course, change chords. I missed that. And now, that's not the big one. Reverse it. P, A, M, A. Ooh. Try to get that one faster, and once you can get that one fast, your Via Lobos will no longer be slowed down by your AM alternation. Because that's really where you see AM. You see it in arpeggios like that. You never see AM scales. So like, what level are you at where you're playing AM scales? When is that ever necessary? I don't know. It's pretty rare, I would think. I mean, I've never done it. Yeah, like the only thing you really see A for is like tremolo, and then like alternating between A and M for arpeggios. So that's where you should probably practice it. And then if you want to work on like a specialized piece that has an abundance of A, for whatever reason, an A abundance. They're always like specialized things. Like, I mean, like this. Where you have to learn some weird fingering. But, you know, wait for the weird fingerings to present themselves and then invent your weird exercise that you can try to master. That's my opinion. Okay, so you have this thing now. And this. Now, accent individual notes. And this. I feel that. And that's just the next level of just increasing your finger accuracy and the sensitivity of your fingers. Yeah, you'll see, it makes a big difference. It's one thing to just hit a string, and then it's another thing to hit a string and also attack it at a certain volume too. If you can do those two things really reliably, you have pretty good control. Just hitting the string isn't always enough, because what if you hit the string and it sounds bad, or you should have played quietly? What do you do then? Get embarrassed, I guess. All right, I think that's enough talking with that for now. I would show you the rest of this condo, but we're kind of stuck to my computer right now. I have like the same setup as usual. Uh, I'll show you like a video. I'll attach a video on my phone. But yeah, for now, let's go ahead and get back to the practice bench, and I'm gonna work on the nighttime stuff. And, you know, this is me on vacation, still practicing, still being a good boy. That's what you should do. Which, I mean, honestly, if you're on vacation, maybe you shouldn't practice. Or even bring your guitar. Like, it's fine. You're not gonna die. But I brought it because, you know, I wanted to. I've said this before, we all have to pick that one thing in our life, and for me, it's guitar. You know, for you, guitar might be your second or third thing, and that means that you don't have to bring it on vacation, and you can always come home to it. You're home a lot more than you're on vacation, typically, unless your life is sick. Don't feel bad about not playing on vacation, because you're gonna be home again. Vacation will be over. Just try to enjoy it. It's already hard enough to enjoy things sometimes. All right, that's enough of that. I'm gonna get back to practicing, and then I'll play something for you. Yeah, we'll probably probably wrap it up after that. All right, I'm gonna scoot you away now. The clock will actually be left off on the exact same spot, which is kind of funny. You know, a part of me kind of wants to get an analog clock for the apartment now. We'll see. Maybe I'll get a grandfather clock. That'd be kind of cool. All right, I'm just gonna go through all the rep. We're gonna call it a day. So I will see you there. <laughs> I think
think I'm about ready to call it, uh, actually call it a day. We are calling it. Uh, yeah, let me bring you closer, I guess. Uh, I actually did some pretty good work. So I'm changing some fingerings in the Presto, because I play a lot of it in open position, and I think it would be better, uh, to not do that for many reasons. I don't have to get into them now. But yeah, there, there's some places that are a little bit awkward in open positions, but I'm not gonna play that. I'm just gonna play the third movement of the Morel Sonatina, because I did work on that. Uh, I mean, I played through it once, and it felt pretty good. So, here it is. <laughs> I skipped a lot of repeats. It's been like two days since I played guitar. I'm glad I got a decent sesh in. I plan on getting one in tomorrow where I'll basically work on all the same stuff. Mainly just maintaining. I might just like play through everything. And that's like sort of what I did today. I didn't like work on anything per se. I do know that my next goals will be refingering the presto to be more optimal, memorizing the Siciliana, and then also getting through Morel's second movement. Uh, but for now, we're just trying to not lose anything. So, you know. I'm just making a video. Making a practice log. All right, well, I think we can pretty much wrap this one up. So let's wrap it up. Hey, well, you know, if you made it this far, thanks for joining me in this beach edition. Just look at my setup. Look at that. It's still pretty extensive, honestly. I have quite a bit going on, but uh, well, let's see if we can look out the window. Can't really see much. But uh, the beach is right over there. I'm probably gonna go there right now. Um, I probably won't swim. It might be a little chilly, but it, it's actually, it's pretty warm, it feels pretty warm. Anyways, of course, if you're interested in lessons, there's a thing for that. Just check the description, got a question, just ask it and I'll answer it. All right, well, I'll see you, not tonight, but tomorrow. Bye.